Hello. There you are. <laughs> How are you doing today? Oh, I needed a little break, a little uh, a cookie therapy. There's our <laughs> therapy. We're ready, guys. I hope you're ready. <laughs> I, had, I had a little, uh, I, you know, really this pandemic thing has made me have like, I didn't ever really have anxiety. And I think I've developed a bit of anxiety. So it doesn't take much to kind of make me feel uncomfortable anyway. Oh, what about rattles, you? It rattles you, doesn't it? I, I feel like I have days where people, um, I don't know. I'm more rattled than others at the shop. Like when people are just not paying attention and stuff, I, I get nervous. Oh, look at it. Everyone's here. You're popping on. Hey, Allison. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Sandy, Hi, Susan. Jennifer. Look at them. Welcome, everyone. So, so glad you could join us. England. Hello, June. We were just chatting about you. Uh, we said, <laughs> we're how, why did you have your kitchen? Yes. How business is going. Look at that. Oh, Amber's here and Han. Hey, guys. Oh, hello, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, well, Sherry, if you can't stay, you can just, perfect time for me to say, it's on replay. If you can't watch all and you want to catch it at a later time, we save it on Facebook and on YouTube and you can rewatch it when it's convenient. So, Mar, listen, I have to tell a funny story real quick. Oh, they love, they'll love a funny story. Go. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I can't fall asleep at night. Wait, what are you doing, Allison? <laughs> That's my Allison. I have a cookie addiction. <laughs> so I posted it. We had a cookie class Saturday. That's not the story. But we had a, a local cookie group class on Saturday. And I uh, posted in their cookie group the best um, AliExpress cookie cutter shop. Okay. With a big disclaimer that I take no responsibility if they went crazy. And I've already heard from four of them that they went nuts ordering. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so it was kind of fun, but I was totally enabling everyone. Oh, that's so Hey, Jeremy made it too. Hey, guys. So the funny story, you know, I sometimes I have trouble falling asleep. So normally what I do just so I'm like absorbing things when I'm trying to get myself calmed down is I put on a YouTube playlist. Uh, and I have just all different cookie tutorials. So I'm just listening to stuff when I'm trying to go to sleep. So the other night I woke up and it was you and me. I, this thing had been playing for an hour. I, it's not even something I put on the playlist, but it just flipped over to the next thing. So I was like, oh, cool. We popped up in the queue on our own. That's kind of neat. <laughs> That's when you got woken up by the sound of your own voice. Your voice. I was like, oh, what is Mar doing teaching at one in the morning? I don't know so if that's funny. a compliment. It's like uh, nails going down on a chalkboard. So hello, everyone. Hello, Jeremy. Hi, hi. Hello, hello. So welcome today. Um, oh, hey, Mar, look. You know, I had a birthday last week. My friend sent me this from Canada. Nadine, can you see that? Oh, yes, yes. That's her little logo. But look, isn't this so cool? I don't think she's on here yet. So hopefully she'll see the replay. I can't, uh, I can't make it out. So she put Seriously Sweet on Davis Street on the back and then her oh. logo is on the front. Wasn't that a sweet gift? It is very sweet. So cute. Very sweet. Hello, Cynthia. Hi, guys. Oh, you finally, Brianna, got your airbrush. Well, today you're going to like my project then. We're working with the airbrush. Hello, Emma. Hello, Allison. How is everyone? Hello, Jennifer. Hello. It's so cute that you guys now, like, the, the, the audience has even got familiar with each other. So um, Amy's going to start today, but I'm just going to give the spiel as usual. So um, the the live stream is kind of, uh, you know, you guys support the live stream and expenses and stuff through our coffee shop. If some of you Thank don't know you. what that is, here's the link. So this is mine and Amy's coffee shop. And during the live stream for 24 hours, we reduce the price on the templates used. So... The supplies are free, so you'll find the list of the supplies we use. Yes. And here's my picture for today. Oh, I'm going to hide that thing. So the supplies and then the live template there, that's what I'll be using, the cake slice on the left. And on the right, I've reduced my royal icing class for those cookie desserts. So it's a cake slice, a cupcake, and a slice of pie. If you want to see what a virtual class looks like, it's usually ten dollars. I put it down to five if you're interested, and then the template for the cake slice. And, and I would eat. highly recommend that class. I took that class from Mar when she did it live, and the three cookies in that class are fabulous. Well, thank you. And what are what are we looking at for 
Um, let's see. I think what I put up today, let's see. When we go to brand, let me go in there. Hold on. So you have this? Yes, I have, I have this coming up. So you have to make sure that you at some point pop over to the Seriously Sweet on Davis Street page and like that page because I'll be setting up an event. You can watch live from my page, but it's a, a virtual event by Frosting Creators of San Antonio, and it's called Putting on the Ritz. And I think there's eight people teaching tutorials during that and a lot of um, vendor things. And that's the piece I'm going to be showing you guys how to make. That's actually about 13 inches tall. We're going to be doing some sunflower pops. We're going to make that cool basket with the basket weave. And I'm going to show you how to make that balloon, which is so much fun. And you'll, you'll guess, obviously, if you know me, what it's made out of, because it's one of my favorite things to work with. But it is a wafer paper balloon. We're, we're going to put some preschool techniques to work. <laughs> preschool, yes, yes, yep. yes. Awesome. That's when I first learned how to do paper mache. So let me just tell you, it's going to be fun. And um, I actually have a full, I think, 55 minutes to teach. So I don't have to talk at super speed. So it'll be very oh, fun. Right. I think. Yes. But and, you're good at super speed. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, Mara's going to moderate for me. So she'll be with me that day. So if you have questions, I'll be able to keep working and She'll let me know if you have questions. And then also this weekend in her class, her class is $35 and it's going to be this Saturday, right, Mar? Yes, that's and right. So there's still time. Home. Yeah. And it's a Zoom class. So you can actually interact with her, which is great. And it's going to start at, it's 11 to 1230 Eastern time, right? That's right. So there's still some spots open if you guys want to jump in, but I'm going to moderate with her. So to be, she'll be decorating, full speed decorating. But if you have questions, I'll be able to tell her what those are. But it's really nice. That was one of my favorite classes. When I took that cake class from you, that was the first class I took from you. And I guess it's been over maybe a year and a half ago now. Yeah, it's been how long. But time, uh, that's, where, nice. you know, that's where I met June. June was in that class. So we just had a lot of fun in that class. But I enjoyed it, and I, that was my first experience with getting to ask those direct one-on-one -on -one questions. So if you guys have not jumped in, it's super valuable. I would jump in that class. Thank you, Amy. So today we're doing food theme. I was not paid for that advertisement. I just really <laughs> believe that. You should jump in that class. It, it, it was just so much fun. And several of the ladies from that group and I still chat all the time. So yes like so that's it it's an occasion to actually talk to all the you know the, the little icons that we see on the yes. you know that scroll by and you all know right, you so know what, COVID hadn't started yet when i took that class so that was before we were all kind of in lockdown it was nice to know how to use all of that yes it was a good training mm -hmm. all, all right, right so there's Amy, we're doing food theme. So Amy's doing the main course and I'm doing dessert. So That's right. And it's Tuesday and it's almost time for Cinco de Mayo. So we're doing Taco Tuesday today. So, <laughs> so I don't know it, what how you guys do these things. I'm kind of old school about some of this stuff. Let me show you this little thing. So I have this notebook and of course it's pink shimmer. So I have this notebook and I do sketches in this notebook. Whenever I'm thinking about something or when I see something or there's a color and I learn how to make a color like, you know, the medical turquoise is different than normal turquoise. So in my notebook, I have how to make that particular color for when we all started doing healthcare cookies. But typically when I start out on a project, it starts out like this. It's super. I just have these pre hole punch pieces of paper. I don't even remember where they came from, but I literally have like five cartons of this stuff. So I just start sketching on this paper. And today what I'm going to show you is how to do some, um, you just need two cutters. Really, you could get by with one. The reason I included the second one is because um, we're going to do a taco pinata. So I started with just sketching my tacos out. So I have an outer piece and I just show you roughly where to cut off this bottom. And then I tell you to go to the second sheet to see what to do with this piece, because I try to reuse everything so you're not rolling multiple times. Then we're here, um, the, the half cutter I used in the center of my circle to open it up, because we're going to fill that with sprinkles so that it actually makes a noise when you shake it, when you shake your cookie. And then this, you'll go to the second sheet, and then you need a third piece. So to do your taco pinata today, you, you basically need three large circles, and then we're going to reuse these extra pieces, okay? 
So all that's in the coffee shop? Yeah, I just, I loaded just my sketches because what I was hearing from people is that they feel like they can't do some of these projects because they can't use uh, Procreate. And you can. This is actually how all my stuff starts. And I'm just learning how to use Procreate. So I feel like I got to get it on paper. And then Procreate is super handy. And I am going to master that so you have more, I guess, professional looking printouts, right? For some of the things, but don't be held back by that. Technology should be working for you, not against you. Just learn a little at a time and try not to be overwhelmed. So on your second sheet, I just made the, to show you the piece that you cut off, you're going to flip it. And then on that second sheet you're going to get today, I show you how to use those three extra pieces to make one, two, three different designs. Okay. So how to shape the cookies and do just minimal trimming. And then on the back, I talked to you about using that four inch circle to make two tacos if you don't want to buy the half circle or that you can quarter the four inch circle and you can do it in exactly four quarters or you can do odd shapes, but it works great to make little taco chips so that if oh. you want to do a cookie platter, you can have a whole platter of like the little cookie chips. So if you're having a family, you know, a family event and there's kids over, they tend to really like to give the kids smaller bits of cookies more often instead of one big cookie. Um, so just just something to think about. And then that half cutter, if you do go ahead and buy that half cutter, I just show you how to give it a little angle trim so you can do a super stuffing. Now, if this is not making good sense to you, do you know what you actually need to do is just pop into the grocery store, go down the aisle where all the different vendors have the, um, the taco shells for sale and look at the pictures on the box because it'll give you a really good idea on how to do your dimension, okay? So you can do super stuffed shells like the stand-up shells or you can do the thin shells. So there's all kinds of ways to do multiple tacos, different designs out of one shape. But today what we're going to do is the taco pinata. So we're going to focus on this first. So for the taco pinata, um, I'm going to show you one in a minute, uh, a different taco, the smaller piece of how I did the angled and the stuffed area. But for the taco pinata, we're going to do this outer shell. And of course, we can't do that without some use of candy, right? So <laughs> Everybody pretty much has these little chocolate jimmies, right? You can even make these yourself if you want to out of royal icing, use a number two tip, run a bunch of strings, let them dry, and then crush them up. But I really like the look of the corn taco shells where they look crispy. You know how they have those little dark areas like they've been toasted? So you just take a few of those chocolate jimmies, pop them into a Ziploc bag, and just using... So, something you can use your finger a spatula whatever just crush them down a little bit so that we get we're basically ha we have chocolate jimmy candy dirt right here okay and let me show you what this looks like also in the supply link for you today i put a whole bunch of different candies in there it, someone was asking me for bulk packaging like five pounds to put those links in for them because these are things they want to make Oh. And they'll use them often. So I did find those things for you. A lot of the supplies today, um, as we're adding candies to the tacos, those are going to be in there in five pound quantities. So if you're not going to use that much, definitely get the smaller ones. But I did link it for you today with the bigger. So we're going to have a little bit of fun and have a little shimmer on our taco too. Basically, what we're doing is we're doing an over, it's going to look like one of those overstuffed shells, right? So this is just a basic outline. Do a basic outline on our taco. Doesn't have to be super smooth or fancy because we're about to texture this. I'm just quickly flooding. I hope am is I that gold. What color is your icing? I'm, I'm using a Maramist gold. And also in the link today for you guys, I listed a, the Nifty 50 Americolor. It was one of the first starter sets that I got. Um, because it had so many different already mixed colors in it. And I just really liked their colors. So that's the one I linked for you today. But you clearly don't need 50 colors, right? We're just going to be using gold, avocado, and warm brown to make our tacos today. So I'm just going to give that a little swirl just to make sure I have full coverage. I don't need it to be smooth. If you're worried about it being smooth and you really want that look, give it a little shake, shake. We're going to come back immediately. Watch what this does. 
You can do this. your crushed sprinkles. Yes, this is my crushed jimmies. Now you can also use, um, let's say you had totally brown. Nope, wrong one. Let's say you had the, um, like a woodland brown or totally brown airbrush color. Any, any brand will work. A little paint palette. Put some of your airbrush color in the paint palette. If you have a fan brush, you would soak it in the color and then you could just tap. And if you wanted your cookie to be flat, but I wanted texture and I wanted candy. So this is what I usually use when I do the tacos and I just pinch a little and look how easy, but it just totally looks like the little charred pieces on a taco shell. Isn't that cute? It is. It adds just that little extra detail. And you'll know it's mine, right? Because it has candy on the cookie. So it, there's no question when you see this pop up in, in a feed later. Oh, that has candy. So Amy or Mar did that, right? All right. So if the pieces, if there's any pieces in there that you find are too big, they're perfect to tuck down. Just give it a little tap because then it even gives your taco shell a little more texture. Do you see? Yeah. So then it looks more authentic like the shells. But you have to... Give it a minute before you start tucking them down because you don't want it to, um, you don't want the icing to heal and marry back over the top, right? We want we want it for the purpose of texture. Now, if you want to get a little extra, you definitely do not have to, but I love this. This is Diamond Dust from Sugar Art. It's 10 karat gold. Well, and, uh, everybody needs a gold encrusted taco. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna put, put some gold on my taco for a little fun. And you guys, the reason I got so inspired to do tacos, Amara, I think I told you every once in a while, um, uh, well, I get these subscription boxes. There's a couple of places I get subscription boxes every month. Mm. So it's just like fun new products and stuff that come in. And this one is from, I forgot to check with her to see if she had any left, but this is the April box from Sweet and Saucy Life, April Kalanchik. And she has one out. So this one was a whole Cinco de Mayo theme. Mm -hmm. So in that box, you get a half cutter. And if you, if anybody is interested in that or wants to check it out, I have a code where you can get 10% off. So if you'll just message me, I will be happy to share that. It's for your first time that you purchase that um, a subscription box. So these are two I did earlier. And so do you see how I have the little dimpled effect and it looks like it's charred? Yes. Everything's firmly attached. So you're good to go. The only thing you want to make sure of when you, um, do you see this little smear right here? Those jimmies are actually like little, they have a little bit of um, chocolate to them, right? So they heat up. So they have to come totally back to room temperature or you'll have a little smudging. So I want to show you that again. I don't want to ruin my taco but I want you to see it because you never want to try to bag these right when they come out of the dehydrator. So do you see how the candy gets kind of melty? So if you want to use a brush on this, let me lift that up. If you want to use a brush, if you want to get even a little more texture, you can swoosh this around a little, okay? So let's see, that is our two outer pieces of what we're going to be doing. And let's pop those right over here. In that diagram, you'll see there's a center section that I did with the half circle. Here's what's important about the half circle. When you're doing a pinata cookie, and specifically when you're doing this taco that I designed, you need a little room around the edge to insert your meat and your lettuce and your tomatoes. And look, guys, for you, I even have sour cream. We're going to have so much fun putting this together. And then oh, so mini marshmallows, mini toast, the mini um, freeze dried marshmallows. So I put a link in there for that for you, too, because I use those a lot on cookies. Um, so this is what we're going to fill our pinata with so that when we shake it, oh, you, yes. you will hear it. But I wanted this to be really brightly colored. So I'm not using the same sprinkles that I'm using on my taco. Now, I am doing this a certain way. You're not locked into doing it this way. For instance, this is a fabulous sprinkle mix from Sweet Treats. If you want to make a whole bunch of just single layer tacos, this is a great sprinkle mix because it looks like you have tomatoes and lettuce and yeah. you've got cheese sprinkles, right? So could you open that? Thank you. 
Keep it's talking. a good color, uh, a good color palette for it. And it looks like that might be Christmas. Is it Christmas? No, it's, um, this one is called uh, Taco Bowden. It was actually- Oh, it is uh, Taco. Yeah, oh. This was in the, the subscription box that I got from Sweet and Saucy Life. This was actually in there, but it would also be fantastic at Christmas because it has all the Grinch colors. Do you see that? And it's got stars. So you could make even Christmas trees out of this. The thing about it is, is I keep this and use this stuff all year. Like mm -hmm. I try not to think about the name of an item. Yes. Um, but let's pop back to why that cutter is important. So we need that little bit of an edge because when we put our pinata together, we need to have not just the space to fill it, but we want to, um, we want to have room around the outside edge to add in all the other bits. So I left plenty of room at the top here at the bottom. We're going to match it up. We're going to put the whole thing together and then we're going to do a little airbrushing just for a little extra detail. So this is how easy this is to assemble. Don't so Becca, she's making a 3D pinata taco cookie. Yes, there's so much holes. The sprinkles were from a subscription box. Repeat. Uh, um, the April. subscription box was from Sweet and Saucy Life, and it's April Kalanchik's group. And if anybody is interested, I have a coupon code for your first purchase. If you ever want to buy one of those as a one-off or if you want to join her monthly thing. So let me know if you need that. Just make sure you pop over to the Seriously Sweet on Davis Street page, and I'll get you all that info. Um, so this is what we're going to fill with today. This is a regular birthday rainbow sprinkle mix. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pop a few. Uh, and usually I have a baby spoon here, but I forgot to bring the baby spoon. So I would just normally spoon these in until this is about three quarters full. I don't fill it all the way because I like to hear the noise. And yeah, you can, they're too tight, right? They won't move. Yeah. And you can hear it. You can actually hear this when it shakes. So I just try to put a full bottom layer and then maybe maybe one or two of the six slits. I don't ever put the little hard beaded candies, but I do like these. These would be okay in there. But for today, because we're going to be using these as our lettuce, I mean, as our tomatoes, I have many M&Ms. So I'm going to put some mini M&Ms in here, okay? Just mm -hmm. a couple, just for fun when the kids crack it open. And then we're going to go ahead and pop on our next piece of taco. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Then I'm going to gently flip this up while it's all still wet so that I can get it where so it actually, can see. Yes, so it'll stand see. up. You could use it as an upright display piece, okay? So I just kind of want to gently get that together. I, I did these cookies maybe an hour before we came on live and popped them in the dehydrator. So not a big production time there to get ready for this cookie, you know? So this is our cookie. What I'm going to do really quickly is I have, um, you can use any yellow that is a slightly different version of yellow than whatever you did your taco in. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and airbrush my sides with some sunshine yellow. I just don't want my cookie to be super bright. And I'm also going to put down a paper towel. Put that on my turn. Nadine, Nadine has arrived. Hello, Nadine. Hey, Nadine. I showed them my birthday present, Nadine. I think they liked it. Hello, Mary Jean. So can you guys see, I'm just barely coloring the uh, exposed edges of the cookie. And I'm really, I'm not doing the middle one because we're about to put a lot of stuff on there. But what I'm doing is aiming just for this outer edge to give it a little highlight around the rim of my taco. Guys, this is a great technique to use on flat taco cookies too. Cinco de Mayo is next week. So if anybody's going to be making any of these up to deliver to anybody, this is just an easy, easy cookie. You can make them one fancy display cookie. You see how I'm just highlighting the edges? Yes. I'm going I'm to lift that so you can see it. But this is a really easy cookie to make super fancy or make a whole bunch of little ones. And I'm going to show you the little ones in a second. So let me lift that up. And can you see how it just has a nice highlight now? Yeah, yeah. All right. So now we're going to flip it upright and we're going to start to work on this cookie. Normally, I would set this aside and let it set up for a good half an hour to an hour. Just let it set up and congeal together. Um, but we're going to start for the purposes of the video. We're going to go ahead and get started. 
one of the things that you might want to use, you definitely don't have to, you know, it's one of my favorite tips. This is a 352 by Wilton. Can you see that where it has like the bird beak? So I have a thicker green icing. This is a toothpaste consistency icing. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. We're going to move fast. Um, I don't know how you build your tacos, but I'm going to build this taco like I actually build my taco. So let me try. I'm going to try to keep the camera right over top. If you have questions, just ask. I'm going to start right here and I'm just shooting in some thicker brown because this is where my chocolate sprinkles are going to go. And I've got a couple of varieties for you. Maybe you want to get really fancy and you want some more chocolate. These are mini chocolate chips. They make great taco meat. So let's say, let me see if I can flip this up. I don't want to crack it. Right? Yeah, it's, so a bit, gonna... it's a bit tricky to handle. I, I at my bulk store, they have shaved little chocolate swirls. Yes. Too. Yes, that would be good. The chocolate jimmies are fantastic here. Mixing jimmies and chocolate chips looks nice. So you just kind of have to decide. I really like the look of this. I think yes, it always right. turns out so pretty. So let me get to the other side because we don't want a half filled taco, right? No, so I'm, no, just, no. I'm shooting in some more royal icing. We're going to use some more chips. Now I'm going to not just put everything on the cookie at one time. I'm actually going to layer mine like I put a real taco together. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can make this take as little or as long as you want. Maybe you, maybe you want to roll it and let everything dry and then just put the icing in and roll it like you would to collect sprinkles on the edge of a cookie. That's perfectly fine too. All right. So what we're going to do is take our very thick green icing. I'm going to cut the bag back a little because I am going to use that cool tip. Um, I'm sitting in the same area and somehow I lost my bag. Oh gosh. Yes. I feel your pain. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. All right. So here's what we're going to do. The next I'm, I'm imagining this activity for, uh, you know, tweens. Yes. This so, would be a great cookie kit for kids. It's not yes. that hard and it's so pretty. So well, it's, it's just that there's so many elements that you're adding. It's kind of like a little craft project on top of it, right? Yes. I love 3D cookies. You guys yeah. know that. So you know exactly what's about to happen. So guys, you have two options or you can mix these. So yellow sparkling sugar for your cheese or little yellow jimmies to make your cheese. And oh, normally, when, yeah, me too. I like how they look. And I also like um, when I build a taco, I like to put my cheese on top of the meat when the meat's hot because then my cheese gets gooey. So, so that, Karen, I don't know if you saw Amy putting it together. That middle cookie is actually hollow to hold sprinkles. So it's it's basically a round cookie cut in half. The middle one is just fluff to fill the area. Yes, just Not to get it, get it thickened out. I can't see the question. So, Mar, am I doing okay? You're doing fine. No, she was saying that it looked like a like a, it was a whole meal. It was a lot of cookie. I was just mentioning that it's empty in the middle, so it's not that much. So we're still good. See, it's still holding together really nicely. So now what we're going to do, I always put my lettuce on the top of the taco because I don't want it to get wilty. Yes. I like, I like to have um, nice lettuce. So what we're going to do here, we're using this toothpaste consistency and the, what did I say? What did I say? This was a three, 352 tip. It's just a leaf tip. You could do this by just trimming the tip of your bag with no issue. Now, yeah. the icing is primarily to come up over the cookie because I'm about to add sprinkles and um, sprinkles and jimmies and sugar for the shell. But I wanted it to have something coming up and over. And so you see now why we left that extra space, right? Yeah. How, how thick, Kath, Kathleen wants to know how thick you roll your cookies. Uh, my cookies are quarter inch. Monica so, says, hey. Hey, how are you? So let me show you this. Um, somewhere I have tweezers, but of course, now that we're live, I cannot find them. So guys, on your supply list today, do you see these? These are watermelon sprinkles. But don't, they oh. totally, but don't they totally look like half tomato slices? Oh, I got to tell you, I find they look more like tomatoes than water. Yes. 
So you have lots of options, okay? If you want to do more cookies mass produced or you're worried about how hard the sprinkles are, get yourself a bag of mini baking M&Ms and sort out the red ones and just make sure the M is turned into the icing. These are great. If it's summertime, it's too hot where you are, you just can't make that work, then these are a dollar in, in that bag at Michael's. I, I never seen those actually in store. I posted, they're in the, you know, where they have in the bigger Michaels in the hanging section where they have like tons and tons of sprinkles. Yeah, my so, sprinkle section has been so pitiful recently that it's like really. Well, I got to tell you, Mar, my store, when I went to it here in town, it was, it's a brand new store. They opened after the pandemic started. They were in the process of building, but like half the wall is empty. So I don't know if that means we're going to be coming into a situation later or not. Yeah. Okay. But one thing I do want to mention, I am doing this in a certain order because I don't want to cover all of the icing with my green sprinkles and sugar because then it won't be tacky or sticky or have open room to add my tomatoes or to add my sour cream. So this is what I like to use for my sour cream bit. So I just drop a few in. I think they read obviously that it's supposed to be sour cream. They don't read like marshmallows. But guys, these are fantastic on s'mores cookies. If you don't want to do the little marshmallows, do you guys ever have these in your candy section? They're vanilla flavored Tootsie Rolls. So they're a really nice cream color, like um, just like sour cream is. You can just twist one of these in half, make a little twisty bit, and you can have one little dollop on the top oh of the my, that's a cute idea. And so soft, it doesn't affect your teeth at all. So now we're going to go back while our green is still wet and we're going to just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle these little green jimmies. The link for these is also in your supply list for today. If you've never seen these before, but I think pretty much everybody has. And then any kind of green sanding sugar. I, I think I put a thing of sanding sugar in there that's got like three colors mixed because we seem to use all those colors all the time. Mm -hmm. but the mixture of doing the sanding sugar with the jimmies does two things. It makes it reflective, right? Like from underneath the jimmies. And then you've also got the nice lettuce sticking up. So this just makes, a when you're doing a fancy focal cookie like this, it makes it really nice. But then look what I also have. Oh my God. Can you see it? So if you're careful, you can give a quick spritz just right across the top. Just a little bit of that green sparkle to go on your lettuce. And I'm going to turn this and show it to you. Because everybody needs a glitzy taco. <laughs> you know you do. All right. Let's flip it over to the side that I airbrushed because I'll have to wait for it to dry and then go back and do the other side. But isn't that so pretty? It's I mean, adorable. Just put adorable. A cute cookie. Oh, this is, in my opinion, more of like a favor, you know, to give them on the way out because it's such a like a... This you know, is, like I would make one of these for the middle of a party platter and have it standing upright. And then this is what I planned for you guys to do with all the extra pieces. Right. I did a couple of them up. Do I have a couple minutes still? Sure. OK, so let me get in the dehydrator. I'm a little twisted here today. So this is just doing one of the bits that um, we had left over. Right. So here is one of the pieces, one of the pieces I had suggested to trim it, right? And then another one I said, quarter it. So if you got to this point, you forgot to quarter it. Look, you just break that apart and look how easy it is to make your taco chips. And you can pile these up, can absolutely pile this up. You can use different candies. So if you don't want to use all those fancy little tomato ones I just showed you, you can make all of these tacos that are being eaten right away. You can make them with little red M&Ms. But look how easy it is to make chips. And I would make, if you're going to have a party with kids, it's outdoors, it's summertime, whatever, I'd make a whole mess of these little chip cookies and just pile them up like you would on a party platter if you had chip and dip. And I'd put some red buttercream with it like you had salsa. And look, you've got, you can do a whole stack of chips. And we basically just use the chocolate jimmies, right? This one, let me hold it up for you. Can you see how we ice this one? Mm -hmm. So came up this way, a little brown icing. I attached my chocolate jimmies. I put some yellow jimmies for cheese. There's an M&M and then there's some sugar. If I wanted to, there is enough room on this cookie to come back and shoot in just a little bit of this for lettuce if I want. Well, so you just have to decide what you want to put on each cookie. 
So she's got all the sketches in her coffee shop showing all the variations. She drew them out. If you're having trouble visualizing, she's got it all sketched out for you. If you want to go check out her coffee shop so and like have kind of a concrete um, so template. Yep, so you can make the little chips and you can put some red butter cream out and little cups for dunking like salsa. You've got baby tacos here. So you're reusing all of your pieces from the bottom of making the cookies. You can cut your that half circle. See how it's a little bit bigger than the pieces we took mm -hmm. off the bottom? So mm -hmm. you can have multiple size tacos. By um, Let me show you this one, though. This is another fun thing. So you see how I have this one cut? This is a half one, and I just shaved off this piece because I wanted it to look like one of those overstuffed tacos. So just, do you see how that's going to end up looking when I stuff it? Mm -hmm. So this one, I can have a whole bunch of candy on it if I want to, if I want to have a few really sparkly pieces. So just take a look at the sketches. It's assemble the candy that you want to use ahead of time. It's a three color icing project, right? Um, and possibly you could get away with doing this with just two colors. You could do your lettuce in the yellow because your sprinkles are going to cover up this other part, I just happened to have brown made and I thought it looked a little nicer. So I tucked that in there. But look at how many options. And then you have this cool piece standing up right in the center of your taco tray, right? All your mm -hmm. other little cookies around it. And then maybe what you do, if it's somebody's birthday, maybe they crack this open. You have a birthday message rolled up inside of it. You could print something, hand print something um, with an edible marker on wafer paper, roll it up, tuck it in those sprinklers and have them crack it open. That's really fun too. Um, you could, that would be great for a gender reveal. You know, there's, they're doing a lot of parties that are called talk about it. Right. And so it gender reveal parties when they're guessing what it oh, is. Yes, absolutely. Or like two for tacos, um, for kids parties. So you could do a lot of fun stuff with that. All right. We have any questions or do you want me to demo any more? Are we good? Mar, I think I lost Mar, you guys. If you can hear me, I'm gonna I'm gonna swap over and show you this until she comes back. Somehow we lost her main camera, but not her hand camera. I don't know if she knows yet. Hey Fabiola, how are you doing? I think she's back. I'm back. I was having I'm having trouble with my hand camera. So that's what I'm fiddling with. Well, I'm gonna swap over so I can watch comments, okay? Yeah. Did I miss any questions when we were? I was, uh, I was keeping it on, so okay. it's pretty fine. All right. So Let's tell see. them about your class again, because I noticed the numbers changing. So we probably need to swap you to the big, big screen, right? Hold on. I'm go. just trying to get in with my other. There now we go. This, this kit, by the way, Mar, this taco kit is the kit I'm going to do for the kids this month because we have a little kids group going. Yes, so this is the kit they're going to get to decorate on their own because it's so candy late intensive. You know, they're going to freak out when they see all the candy in their kit. No doubt they'll love it. All I right. So it. I'm going to just um, jump into my project. So this is the template that's in the coffee shop. So I'll just reshow it. I did two versions. So initially I had done the icing version. For those of you, I've been seeing a lot of you buying the airbrushes. And so yes. if you've got an airbrush and you want to know kind of like, what do I do with this contraption? Um, I've got this project for you. So this is the cake class there on the right with in royal icing. And then the 250 today is the shields for airbrushing. So normally when we look at airbrushing, people are using them like Amy did today to create like kind of like, uh, you know, perimeter shading and things like this. This is completely like you're painting mm -hmm. with your airbrush. So it's, it's a bit different in, in the kind of the technique. So here are the template a lot like several of you have commented that maybe you don't have a silhouette or cutting machine. So this is formatted and here i've got a healing board under and you're cutting the black sections and Mar these lines when you, say, when you say healing board is that like a paper craft cutting mat that's right so this is a board where you can cut with an exacto knife and not damage your surface gotcha and so you're using that and you're cutting away all the black sections okay and then you chuck the black and the like what's left is basically your shield. So the black is where the color needs to be open to go on the cookie. So that's why you need to cut that away. So this is just to like to quickly show that to you. So we're going to actually airbrush a cookie using the shields. I cut my shields with 
my silhouette because I have one. And so um, I make them in clear plastic. You can work in cardstock. I do like the clear plastic because then I can see for alignment. I can see how to position my, my stencil. So when you're airbrushing, if you're working on a colored surface, it will impact your airbrush color. Like you see this nice bright pink. If I was airbrushing on a yellow cookie, well, it would look orange. It wouldn't look pink. So it's important to have a white canvas if you want your airbrush colors to remain true. I'm trying to get in the center here. And so here is- You have a paper towel down too. Did you say that? Well, I have, yeah, I didn't, but thank you. I have a paper towel down just for the overspray so that it'll catch the, um, the paint basically so that it doesn't go everywhere. Now I yeah. use magnets. That retractable exacto, that's actually a pen knife, right? It's in your supply list or in your favorite. I didn't add the, that. It's a pen blade and you can use an exacto, whatever, you know, like knife that you have that you like, you know, make sure that it's a sharp, sharp one because when it gets dull, your corners are usually sloppy. And do you have a particular place you recommend for that cookie cutter? I actually, the template has the hand cutting so you can hand cut. I do have it in the supply list, but it's a copper cutter. It's quite expensive. Copper cutters are expensive. Yes. Um, they're like a little bit of a, you know, they're, they're high end of cookie cutters. And Monitor, so if you're someone who has that it. cookie, they have that cookie hanging in their cookie room. So it's one they liked and kept. <laughs> I am selling the, that's what's in the, um, the coffee shop, Sally, the templates. So that's what you're getting when you go into the coffee shop. That's what I'm listing. So if that's something that interests you. Okay, so we're going to do, so certain colors layer better than others with the airbrush. Pink and brown are colors that, that um, the brown is like not too impacted by the pink. So I'm going to start with the pink just for, now obviously any version, you can, you can switch things up for your color palette, what you want to do. This is just a demonstration. So here I've got my pink, electric pink. And I'm filling the, the cake here. You see these wiggly lines are the layers in between the cake. Yes. Sally's okay. asking if you meant the cut templates. I, and Sally, what she has in there is the files where you can cut this on your silhouette machine. Like, but, so there's JPEG, so you can do it with a Cricut. And then there's the actual Silhouette Design Studio files. And then someone else is asking, only place I could get a cookie cutter like that is copper. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a... Um, um, just a regular metal version of a pie that's close to this. Yes, but the, the designs I've seen are often not this, like it's like a different perspective of the yes. cake. And you're not getting the outer edge of the cake, which I don't really understand. They're always right. showing the point instead and of this love, nice edge where you could actually put something so i don't really understand yes, you can do all the cool candy when you when we did this class i was like oh my god you can actually rim this like you decorate a cake exactly exactly so here i've created a little shield for the edge of the cake so this is like how you would decorate the perimeter like if you were actually decorating a cake so you could put there any stencil that you own if you have any other stencils or you could put all you know the collection of stencils that you have well you could use it here on the edge for your cake and we you have a question use... diana is asking if your base isn't white can you first use your shield and spray white then let it dry then you can white is tricky if your white is good like there's i've heard people have a variety of results with white airbrush so if you're if you kind of work to not do that usually it's ideal the white can be tricky if you have a good brand then do it you know the way that you want but from what i've heard the white tends to be a little tricky so now this mm -hmm. is the cake layers so you see now i'm protecting that pink stripe inside mm -hmm. and i'm going to fill now this will be the actual like cake so you could do a um ivory or something like that but for the sake of the video i'm going to do a chocolate cake and because you've got here the base in in airbrush well you can come in with marker and and add like more detail and if you're an artist and you like to paint and you like to 
add all your little touches well once you have your airbrush on you can do that you know like it, this is, gives you basically the the drawing lines and then you can come in and, and do your little touches this doesn't stop you from being artistic right this, this all this does is help you make more money because you're working faster and if you can make 50 cookies instead of 20 well it doesn't take a genius to figure out that's a lot more money in your pockets right, right? it's so pretty too look at that and for and wedding look, I basically decorated this cake i've painted it and i will be able to repeat this on 100 cookies if i need to in a um, flash what tell me if you know what bright eyes is asking she's saying can you lay all stencils on the cookies at once no is that what you're saying because you have I'm to go sure. color by color because you're trying to create a separation between the colors. Like you're, so you're, you're doing a stencil and then a shield, right? Yes, exactly. So when I did the brown, I was protecting the pink and the white so that the only opening was the chocolate. See here, I have a different layer that's like a drippy. Now yes. I, I'm going to put on the other one, but you can see here, see there's drippy on the edge. You could really do so many different things. So here's my brown one. I'm going to try to keep Love to know. It. Now I'm going to do the swirl. So the swirl I did in Wedgwood because I found that it was a color that kind of could look like the white, like a shadow on a white, you know? And Mar, you could have done some sparkle on there, right? When you first did the icing, if you wanted to sparkle up the side or something while it or, was down. And the other thing that you can do is cut the whole cake, like a whole silhouette, the whole, whole thing, lay that down and then airbrush the perimeter. So then you get a colored perimeter and your cake remains white. Then you can come in and do your, um, oh, nice. Brushes, right. That's a great idea too. So here is the swirl shield. Love so it. Oh, I think I'm upside down. So you want to just look at your design to make sure you're going the right way. And so here the swirl is three lumps of icing basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So by having them be separate, well, I can come in and, and do the shading instead of having the whole swirl, that's, that's where you're able to come in. See, now I'm going to hit on the perimeter and I'm able to get like a shading around that little bubble, you see? Whereas if it was one big area, I couldn't get that shading. That shading wouldn't look the same. And Mar, they're asking if you typically use four or five mil mylar. I think you use four, right? I do use four, yes. Okay. That's so pretty too. And the way you're able to do the airbrush to get it a little heavier on the edges, that looks perfect. Well, that's it. That's what the whole shield business is about. Oh, is show, them, show them what you just did, how you just flip that over to make that other. It's all on the same piece of stencil. I'm working upside you... down, but you can see it's, it's, I just, it's how you create your shield. So you, mm -hmm. you can make it. What's the logic for your brain? You know, like my brain maybe is a bit different than, you know what I mean? Like everybody yes. has their methodology, like how it should be, what's logical to them. That I can right. a sprinkle kind of little shield here. If you want to add sprinkles and you can break yeah. them up. Here, oh, just... that's so cute. And if you want, you can come in and add, um, in icing. So this can become a template. So you can come in and, and re-ice the little sprinkles. So now well, I'll do Could you scrape part. with that one? Could you scrape, do a royal icing scrape on that area? You could, you could, you could. So let's do a little more dimension here slightly. So here, what am I gonna do now? Hi, I'm gonna Marie. We noticed you weren't here. We weren't sure where you were. I'll do a slightly different version here. So now I'm just laying this down. Oh, I didn't even put my magnets. So I'm filling my cake. Love it. Here. I'm not going to go too crazy on this side because I wanted to do the top in chocolate. Oh, I love just it. Here. Wouldn't this be pretty, Mar, as like a strawberry lemon, uh, raspberry lemonade cake? Since oh, you yeah. Like, cake. I mean, it's seriously, infinite possibilities. I can see this as a wedding cookie to ma for favors to match somebody's wedding cake. This would be so cute for that. So now I'm doing the drips. Oh, look at that. It looks like real chocolate is oozing down the cake. Just like that, you've got wow. a drippy cake. And then you can come in and do again like the... You want to wait before you lay your stencil again, just because then it'll kind of like smudge. 
right? You want to make sure that your sections are dry before you start layering the stencil. And I'm working here. I'll just do it in uh, this, the wedge wood, just for contrast. Because, like, nice. maybe not the ideal coloring, but just to show you guys the concept. So I'm hitting the, the wiggly line. And you don't have to do full coverage. You can just do, like, whispers of color. <laughs> so... Julie is saying yummy, and June is saying who else is getting hungry for cake? <laughs> so I think they like the food and dessert aspect of this. Yes. <laughs> well, now you can do the swirl in oh, pink. Yeah, Linda's saying layered cheesecake with this would be pretty too. Absolutely. Whatever version that's it you want to do. Yeah, so that's here. awesome. Jeremy, he's saying he's been averaging 1,500 calories a day. He's hungry for cake at all times. I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You, Julie's saying you could make this fun to go with the Cinco de Mayo. Look at this, you guys. So you definitely need to jump on Marlon's Coffee Shop and buy this set of stencils and the PDF if you want to hand cut them, okay? So you, now you can use this all year. Yes, absolutely. So now you've got the cake done, okay? That's and so now pretty. you can come in with a marker and you know exactly, exactly, maybe you say, oh, I'm not good at drawing. Well, you're tracing now. Yes. So you're just tracing those lines that you did. So boom, you know exactly where to outline. You can do it in icing or you can do it like this with the marker. I just love that. So pretty. And this is like the big trend right now, these kind of like, outline designs and um lisa is asking if the cake slice is in the cookie school i think it is right i did add the cake slice in the cookie okay. school and april is here hey april i hope you caught the taco section segment i mean so the marker is in the supply list if you want to like see about this mark where am i now you're you're good right there are you using the um the rainbow drip is that what you're doing it's um is it called rainbows i think it's color color drip color drip i don't know it, I, it's I have drip amazing color drip, drip color drip color that sounds right i know yeah. this is so fun isn't it julie this has been such a fun a fun um live stream and so this this technique is really popular right now and so by having the kind of like quick airbrush perimeter well you're not having to guess and it's a great like way to get yes. the consistent design and, and it's, yeah, beautiful. Have... it's beautiful it looks illustrated yes exactly it looks like it took tons of time and mark do you remember what you labeled that um royal the class on your coffee site the the cake it's a cake i i put it at 50 it's like 50 percent off Today, cake slice class. That's what I put it as. I And I did see it before we started. So I think it is. And you put a royal icing class up. She's asking about a royal icing class. There are a few classes up. If you okay. look, I think you can sort. So if you go through the whole shop, there's not a lot to go through. So I'm not going to make you suffer there. There's just like, you know, there's not that much to go through. And I've got a few classes up. Here are the pictures. Um, these are the like full classes. So there's the cake one. You see virtual class. You see the cake pieces. Then there's yes. the shells. Then there's the Chihuahua, the 3D purse. And there's the tutorial for the Elsa, how to use this technique to recreate characters. Okay. So if you, if you needed to do, um, you know, a cartoon or something, there's the template for Elsa. But the point of that Elsa video is how to make your templates so that you can recreate characters using this okay. shield technique. So you How see- How big is that cookie, Mar? Is that a four inch cookie or bigger? Yeah, so it's about that. Okay. So you can see them side by side. You see the different versions. Mm -hmm. It's just so fast. And then yes. you can again come in, you can leave it. If you, if you like it like that, leave it. But because you have the line so easy, I mean, I'm sketching at, you know, I mean, I'm not even really paying attention. So June wants a live class after Corona's gone. She wants, yes. Yes. She border says, has to reopen. Yeah. Who else will drive? Our border is like, and now we're the problem. Our numbers are through the roof. 
Do you, can you see? Let me read this to you. Jeremy says, it's weird. Like people like what I say and seem to be happy I'm around. His therapist says, yeah, you found a community. He says, my community is a bunch of cookie decorators. Therapist, yeah, it's weird, dude, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Weird. It's cookie therapy and it makes people smile and you guys always leave happy. So I think we're um, doing a good service here. <laughs> well, there's a lot weirder than this. I, I watch the news and I say, oh my gosh, if everybody was just as weird as us, we'd be in a better place. Yes. So, there it is. <laughs> so someone's asking if you can uh, flip the stencil on your cutting machine. You could just cut it out and then flip the stencil, right? Is that the question, Shirley? Well, yeah. I mean, you just flip it over to whatever di direction you're planning on cutting your your cake. Yes. Right? Because now, like, trip. I thought it. Look, Allison said she'd go on a road trip. So um, she would come, too, for an in-person live class. So we got to set that up. Yes. Like a, uh, what do they do? They call them retreats. That's it. Yes. Retreat. And listen, Mar, when you're up for that, you know, I live near the um, Blue Ridge Mountains, right? They're beautiful, beautiful mountains and Shenandoah Valley's on one side. We're on the other side, but they have a beautiful national park up on top. We could have a great retreat up there. Oh yeah. It'd be fun. And uh, some sort of a cabin type thing. Yes. It's a cabin feel. Let's see. I think I kept you caught up on the questions, but let me just check real quick. I missed some things coming in. Uh, yeah, thank you. We're so glad you guys come every week. And thank you so much for supporting us in the coffee shop. It makes all the difference in being able to take the extra time to do these every week. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. So um, they're awesome. Yep. Let's see. Ooh, la la. A cookie retreat. <laughs> oh. We would probably not sleep at all, though, I think. Yeah, our insurance should totally cover the trip in the class because it is therapy. And you're not, um, it's probably a lot cheaper than other therapy, right? Oh, and look, we would have, Miss um, Susan said she'd come for that. So she'd be coming across the pond, eh? You're all, oh, you're starting to say, A eh, from watching me so much? I had a friend when I worked for the jewelry company that was Canadian and she said it all the time. And I noticed the other day I was starting to say it again. I was like, why did I pick that back up? And then Brian's like, it's Marlon. <laughs> you hear Marlon say it. Yep. Look, they're ready to go with the rest of the week now. Oh, wow. so, so here's the templates to the coffee shop once again. Look, we're and... two minutes early. Hey. Eh? We're three minutes early. Yes. And we're not late it. today. I, I was sure I was going to go late. So there we go. And uh, yeah, this is, if you're you're new to airbrushing, this is a fun project because the thing that happens with the airbrushing, if, especially if you're new to it, is you tend to get a little bit um, hard to control, right? It like oversprays and it goes in areas where you don't want it to go. And so if you have the shields, well, you're protecting the cookie right so you're only getting the color to what is exposed and i suggest you practice on paper so then you build your kind of comfort level of like how far you have to pull the trigger and all that and then once you've got that figured out then you can move on to your cookies and make sure that your surface is dry because if you're resting stencils on a mm -hmm. on a cookie that's not completely dry well, you're going to end up having a cracked surface. So you want to have a completely dry uh, surface. So do you want one more look at the taco pinata? Oh, yes. Let's do the I'll taco one more it. time. That's so cute. Very nice. Here, let's put our taco and our cake yes. together. So today Perfect. you had lunch and dessert. Isn't that fun? Perfect. <laughs> so I know what I'm doing next week. Do you know what you're doing next week? Um, 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 I don't think so. I don't can I, show, think I, can I show them what I'm doing next week on Tuesday? Do you want oh, to? you know? So yeah, show them that. That give, them their, give them their preview. All right. I'll show you because, um, it's just, it's one day ahead of Cinco de Mayo, right? So look what we're doing next week. Another pinata cookie. Yes, but it's a llama pinata. Isn't he cute? And he's even airbrushed rainbow to match. I can't wait to show you this. Now, I'll just tell you, this was specifically designed for the people that always say that too much icing. You know how people normally do that 104 tip back and forth? It's too much icing. 
This is a special um, tip on here. I'm not going to show you what it is today, but it's a special tip on there. So there's a lot of gapping in the icing. So perfectly fine to be able to eat it with no problem, but that's going to be next Tuesday. So we're going to have some very fun. fun, very fun. Well, the party season is coming and I think slowly people will be having a little bit more back to normal this summer. Absolutely. So celebrations slowly will start dipping our toes back into reality. At the, at the shop, we're still individually boxing, bagging, and all of that kind of stuff, but it's not for drive throughs It's just to keep it separate. So when people pick it up from the table and then go to eat, it hasn't okay. been exposed, but our numbers are back up. So yeah, I am teasing you, Shirley. Hey, Marlon, let's do something fun and see if we can crash the, um, the, the stream. You want to try something fun? Okay. There's 136 people on here. So everybody really quick, go to the comment section and type where you're from. Just <laughs> really quickly go type where you're from and let's flood the comments and see if um, what well, we have something coming. So we need to know if we're going to crash this or not. So just start typing where you're from over there and let the comments roll up really quick. Okay. Oh, there we go. I won't even flip them up. We just want you to start typing so we can see what's happening. So we have something, look at that, but from all over. How fun is that? I didn't see Laura today. So Laura from South Africa, if you are um, didn't catch us live, but you catch us later, we did notice you weren't here. We hope you're okay. Look at that. It's not fun, all those places. It is. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Makes our right. day. I hope that you enjoyed today. Yes. I'll be on Friday with uh, Han and Sweet Anne's Amber, and we'll be decorating uh, May the fourth. Where can they get? You. Where can they join your class? Because your class is only in a couple oh, of days. Oh yes, it's uh, the so, class last last few opportunities to join. It's on Saturday, May first at eleven. There's the mm -hmm. link globalbelly.com. And I have it on my Instagram. If you have trouble with the link there, go on Instagram. It's in my bio. The link on Instagram in my bio okay, link, you'll find a direct uh, click. That's going to start at 11 a.m. on Saturday. It's a Zoom class, and I'll be moderating for Marsh. So come with questions. Please don't come with blacked out screens. We want to see your beautiful faces, and we want to talk to you. Well, no pressure. I understand some people like <laughs> my daughter hates having her screen on, so I get it. But you but can if you talk to us, us. We're going to want to chat with you. So join the class. It's an hour and a half long. And also that platter set, you guys, is great. Um, if you that's listed in the in the supply list or in your kit that they have. Right. Because yes, that makes a beautiful Fourth of July platter that that one cutter. You can do well, the thing is, is honestly, it could be decorated in a thousand ways, right? It's one of those yeah. that really can get uh, so many it's, different versions. It's a good cutter set to buy because you can use it for tons of things. I just, I love that one. Well, if you go what on to my Instagram, you'll see a different version. You know, I did that floor, like kind of stitched one. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see it on Instagram if they want to see an alternative. Yes, Sally. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong button. Yes, Sally. Oh, and Gianna too. Looking cool. forward to meeting you guys. Good. Her live okay. stream has her dog. And then I have something else cool cooking that we're going to be bringing you this summer, but I am very good at keeping secrets, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. I am going to tease you and tell you you need to save some money, but I'm not going to blurt it out yet, okay? But we're working on something super fun that's going to be a great deal. Just save a little extra money for this summer. Yes, we'll have some uh, kind of virtual socializing. So that'll be good. <laughs> it's going to so, be really fun. So thanks everyone for hanging in with us, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday for Amy's piñata. And I don't know yet. I'll can figure you, it out. Can you do a llama, or you got something else planned? Do you think? Well, I'm going to see because I have to roll some cookies for the class, so I'll okay. see if I can dig it out. My llama cookie's a bit small. It's a bit depressing. <laughs> I might see if there's something else that I could do. I'll see what else I have. Yeah, we'll be on on the Tuesday before Cinco de Mayo. Hi, Anna. Hello. Hey. Hello. So thanks, everyone. We're going to wrap it up. But thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you next uh, we'll Tuesday, you Friday. Friday. I'll Friday. see you Tuesday. Remember. Where's my slide here? Bye, everybody. See Bye, you next guys. Week. Thank you.